I hear nuzlocks are hard, and hardcore nuzlocks are really hard. But what about a hardcore nuzlocke where the viewers can help or sabotage me? Today we're going to find out if Chris can beat a Pokemon Hardcore Nuzlocke Sabotage. These are the rules of a Hardcore Nuzlocke. I can only catch the first Pokemon found in a route. No duplicates. All Pokemon caught get a nickname, so we can cherish them all the way until... If a Pokemon faints, it is dead, and it must be released. No items can be used in battle except Pokeballs, and I may not have my Pokemon at a higher level than the next boss's ace. Finally, a whiteout means a restart. I'll introduce the wheel as the spins come up, but a spin can make the game easier or way, way harder. Let's do this. Meet Boss Man. Boss Man dreams of a big adventure, making a strong team, and defeating the Pokemon League. We pick Bulbasaur and name it CD Boy. My rival, that guy, chooses Charmander. We name the rival that guy because it always sounds like nobody knows who he is and can't remember his name. Poor guy. I handily beat Charmander by Tackle Spam and get level 6, quickly running up and back for Oak's parcel. Oak gives us a task we will never do. That guy is a jerk some more and leaves. I run back to get some Pokeballs, catch a Pidgey named Birdo, and now we are ready for our Nuzlocke adventure. But there's just one small issue. See, in this time, I've gotten a few followers on Twitch, and so I need to settle up on some spins. The first spin comes up with an extra catch, meaning I can choose to get another Pokemon on any route. I could use it immediately and get a Rattata, or save it for a Nidoran catch on the next route. Either way, I'm up to three Pokemon already. Unfortunately, the next roll is release a Pokemon, meaning I'm going to need that extra catch. And the pain just continued with another release of Pokemon. At the end of this, I'll have just one Pokemon in my party. I got nervous, so I started looking for Rattata immediately, but with another Twitch follow, another spin, I had to release my last Pokemon. My Nuzlocke run was over. Meet Bobby. Bobby dreams of a big adventure, making a strong... I'm just gonna hit the speed up. While we're waiting, let me know down in the comments what generation Nuzlocke you think would be the most fun to play. While you're down there, maybe leave a like. Consider subscribing. This time, we pick Squirtle and name him Duck, and my rival is Paper. After returning Oak's parcel, we catch a Pidgey again and name it Food. I guess the viewers were hungry? Do people eat Pokemon? I survive leaving Viridian this time, picking up a Rattata on Route 22 and name it Rat. Route 2 comes next and I catch a Caterpie named Wormy. I zip through Viridian Forest, hoping for a Pikachu, but get stuck with a Kakuna that we named Big D- Not Ad Friendly. I finally made it to Pewter and snuck into the Pewter Gym. We walk casually behind a trainer who's been waiting for his big moment to take on a Gym Challenger and quickly washed away Brock with three bubbles, taking no damage. Next is Misty in Cerulean. With the boulder badge in my possession, I set out on Route 3 to demolish some bug catchers and other children with my evolved Wartortle, Pidgeotto, Beedrill, and Butterfree. While attempting to catch a spear on Route 3, I discovered I didn't have a Pokeball and had to feint it instead, losing the catch here. On the bright side, Duck gained a level. Thank goodness I'll never mess up another capture again. Having bought some Pokeballs, I enter Mount Moon. The goal was a Geodude to handle Lieutenant Surge, and I just didn't want a Zubat. Unfortunately, it was a Zubat. And even more unfortunately, I killed it. The rest of the cave was a walk in the park, and I entered Cerulean City. I made quick work of my rival in the Nugget Bridge, then went to the grass to look for an Abra, but found a Bellsprout instead, naming it Pea Shooter. This grass type will help a ton in Misty's gym. I make my way through Route 24 and rescued Bill, and get the SSAN ticket as a reward. With my new pea shooter, now a weeping Bell, Misty never stood a chance and is sent to the depths with two vine whips for Staryu, three more for Starmie. Two badges down, on to Lieutenant Surge. While hopping down Route 5, I pick up a Meowth, and we name it Kit Kat. Once in Vermilion, I blaze through the SSAN confidently, I said confidently. Wrong stairs. Confidently! <clears throat> and stomp that fake French-speaking rival, Paper. I really thought this fight was going to be more difficult, but my Pokémon handled it with minimal damage. 
Paper's Pidgeotto came up against Wormy, and even with quick attack spam and an annoying sand attack, Wormy casually spun the bird around in retreat with confusion. Raticate scurried out next, and I swapped to Kit Kat. Two bites later, and Raticate scurried right back. Kadabra swapped in, ready to duel with mind powers, but as I always say, you can't bring a brain to a bite fight. And Kit Kat made a lucky crit to one shot. Ivysaur stomped in and flinched at the first bite, traded a tackle for the second, and fell to Kit Kat's final bite. I get the HM cut from the captain and head back to land. This team is in deep trouble with no counters for Surge's electric Pokemon. So I duck into Diglett's cave, snag a Diglett, and we call it Joe. That joke writes itself. I'm not touching it. I also entirely forgot about Flash. We dug around in some trash cans, solving one of the dumber puzzles in Pokemon, and waltzed up to Lieutenant Surge, who rambled about a Pokemon war, which sounds incredible. And then I ground his team into the dust using Dig, followed by Dig, followed by Dig. With Surge's badge in my case, I can head toward the rock tunnel. I don't know if it was because Mount Moon was so easy, or my memory of the rock tunnel included Flash, but I very quickly regretted skipping the HM. The entire section is super dark, with a really high encounter rate. I mean, really high. And an annoying number of trainers. Seriously though, this took me like 30 minutes to get through. And this trainer decided to poison Kit Kat in the middle of this pitch dark cave. I hate poison. In this generation, poison keeps hurting your Pokemon in battle and also when you're just walking around the overworld. It's kind of a big deal during a Nuzlocke. Finally, back in the light on the other side, I ran past the creepy Lavender Town and over to Celadon to get the HM Fly. I really only wanted to get Fly so quickly to execute a glitch in the game. I walked to the underground house on Route 8, got seen by this gambler, but flew out to Cerulean before he could fight me. I ran up the Nugget Bridge to this youngster and dispatched his Slowpoke. I flew to Lavender Town and headed back to Route 8 to execute this glitch. I caught the Mew, and we named it Mew Mew. But I forgot one of the extra rules of hardcore Nuzlocks. No legendaries. So there goes Mew. I decided to take out my rival Paper in the Pokemon Tower while I'm there. Paper's Pidgeotto was a total pushover, and I confidently swapped into my own Pidgeotto, Food. Gyarados nearly rocked me, as I realized I was being overconfident. Kit Kat came in and I suffered my first loss. Shaken, I pulled in Joe, which is an even worse play, but managed to outspeed Gyarados. I decided to stick with type advantages and swap to Duck for Paper's Growlithe and kept him in for Kadabra, who forgot how to make a move besides Disable. Once Ivysaur showed up, I realized I didn't have a fire type which I'll really need for the next gym, and switch to Wormy for confusion. We held a brief, heartfelt tribute to Kit Kat. In the arms of an angel, fly away from here. At least we're already in a Pokemon graveyard. I picked up a Vulpix near Celadon to cover the fire types and named it Creamy. With Creamy's help, we ripped through the grass gym like wildfire. Or should have. Creamy was wrapped up tight by Victory Bell, and Food had to come in for a rescue with some quick attacks, though Victory Bell managed to poison powder my bird. Creamy came back in to scorch Tangela and stayed in to take on Vileplume. I got a very lucky burn before being put to sleep, forcing me to switch out to Wormy for confusion. Annoyingly, Vileplume successfully poisoned my Butterfree, but that wouldn't stop us. Erica's Super Potion could only delay the inevitable, and eventually Vileplume goes down to burns and confusion like a moth at a bonfire, and I receive the Rainbow Badge. I decided to make a pit stop back on Route 4 to buy a Magikarp, and we named it Big Worm Boy. 
Little did I know how useful Gyarados would be. I sped through the rocket hideout and reached Giovanni in record time. Giovanni starts with Onyx, which goes down quickly to a single side beam from Wormy. I decide to go with type advantage and Duck washes Rhyhorn away with Water Gun. Kangaskhan should have been scarier, but Duck handles it with three more Water Guns. For being against a crime boss, this fight was a pretty big letdown. I'm sure Giovanni will get much tougher later. I head into the Pokemon Tower, capturing a ghastly named Deadboy, who I just now remembered about while editing this video, and demolish some possessed channelers and regular grunts. I get the Poke Flute and fly back to the cycling road. Wow, Snorlax was tough though. After waking the poor thing up, it was grumpy enough to give me all kinds of problems. Duck came out first, wearing the pudgy Pokemon down, but with regular rests, Snorlax slept all its pain away and refused to get in a Pokeball. You'd think for a hurt, sleeping, slow-moving Goliath, it would want to fit in cramped captivity. I eventually swapped to Wormy and put it to sleep on my own terms. Magically, that just worked. I then never used Snorlax either. I made a little bit of an oopsie. I don't have a bicycle, which is normally a problem, but if you just keep walking, you can completely ignore the police. Hashtag not a lawyer. Now that I'm magically riding a bicycle I don't have, I head down to Fuchsia. Incredibly, when you reach the other gate, the police officer will remind you that you cannot ride your magical bike on cycling road. Thanks. I failed to catch anything in the Safari Zone and picked up some gross teeth and get both Surf and Strength. Koga has everything I hate in Pokemon games. Poison. Someone who claims to be a ninja but is actually just a juggler. Poison. Though this gym is redeemed a little by one of the best defeat lines in any game. Koga's fight is tough. Wormy used Psybeam to convince both Coughings that the fight wasn't worth it. But then Muck came out, absorbing the first Psybeam before slopping a strong sludge hit on us and falling to the second Psybeam. Then came Weezing. I was so nervous about self-destruct, but figured that Wormy was the best option to sack if I needed to. I hit the first Psybeam, but it only took half of its health. Weezing sent a sludge that hurt a lot, and Wormy got poisoned. The final side beam, Weezing went down, and Wormy survived. It was poisoned, and with just five health. I stopped off in Saffron after bribing another police officer, this time with water, and picked up Hitmonchan for all the tight punches. Welcome to the team, fighty boy. Once inside Silphco, I managed to find the way through that only had two trainer fights, and landed in front of my rival. This time, Big Worm Boy stepped up, shocking Pidgey out with Thunderbolt, Zapping Gyarados with another Thunderbolt, Snap Freeze and Growlithe with an Ice Beam, who then owned itself with a takedown. I swapped to my newly evolved Victory Bell Pea Shooter to handle Alakazam with a million sharp leaves, and Food batted Venusaur aside with a pair of wing attacks. Paper leaves with his usual swagger and awful catchphrase, leaving only the boss rocket left to fight. Giovanni is supposed to be a scary fight, but never seems to be. Wormy took him out with side beams. Just side beams. Over to Sabrina, we find yet another gym where we can skip all of the underlings and put Rocky up against her team. An earthquake makes Cadaver fall and Mr. Mime gets the aftershock. Mr. Mime's got some chubby cheeks in this gen. Rocky crushes Venomoth with a single rock throw and Alakazam succumbed to the magnitude of a pair of earthquakes. The marsh badge is mine. Since I have Duck on my team and Surf is incredibly strong, the entire Cinnabar Island was a joke. Blaine is barely worth mentioning because he fell without even attacking. Add the volcano badge to the pile. Then, it is finally time to reveal the secret identity of the 8th gym leader. It's Giovanni. And he's still terrible. What a disappointment. I mean, that was the last gym of the entire region. The 8th gym badge. It was more like watching a slideshow of Giovanni's Pokemon. Actually, it was more like Duck invited five friends over for a pool party, but it turns out that none of the friends can swim, and they all sank to the bottom. Well, I won. 
I'm embarrassed to say, it was right at the front door to Victory Road that a viewer suggested maybe you should take some max repels so you didn't have to fight wild Pokemon. Where was this advice when I was in Rock Tunnel, huh? But seriously, thank you. Walking up Victory Road is so nostalgic. Passing each of the guards, presenting my badges. Wait, why are you just treading water 24-7 to check a badge? What a terrible job. Taking in the grandeur of the path to the Elite Four, and definitely the relief of being able to ignore all of the wild Pokemon in the cave. Oh, hi, Moltres. No legendaries. But now it's time to get serious. It's time to face the Elite Four. My team is now Big Worm Boy, Pea Shooter, Food, Duck, Creamy, and Fighty Boy. If we succeed as a team, our names will go down in history! Lorelei comes first with her Ice-type Pokémon. Dugong ate the first Thunderbolt from Big Worm Boy, but waits its turn with a failed growl before succumbing to Thunderbolt. Cloyster followed Dugong, falling to an Oko Thunderbolt. Slowbo tanked the first Thunderbolt, getting paralyzed, but Lorelei healed it instead of attacking, and Big Worm Boy finished it off with... another Thunderbolt. Jinx took a Thunderbolt, and slapped the daylights out of Big Worm Boy. Before falling to Thunderbolt. Lapras was a problem. After taking a Thunderbolt, Lapras confused Gyarados, and I got nervous. So switched to my utility player, Fighty Boy. Fighty Boy got taken down to half health by a Hydra Pump, but I believed I could Thunder Punch and end this. I was wrong. Lapras sent a blizzard, fainting Hitmonchan. But there was no time for grief, and Big Worm Boy came back out to end the battle with Thunderbolt. My heaviest hitter was running out of moves, and my utility Pokemon was already dead. And also, a useless piece of Shduck started the fight against Bruno and his rock-fighting Pokemon. Onyx eroded to surf immediately. I brought out food to take on the fighting types using Fly, and after getting up in the air, dodging the Thunder Punch, a pair of flies swept both Hitmonchan and Hitmonlee off into the distance. Duck surfed again for the second Onyx, which crumbled into sand. Machamp came out, and I switched to food. Food flew up, and Machamp sent a useless fissure below me before coming down to below half health. Machamp set up with a focus energy, so if he could hit, it would hurt. A lot. Food flew up again, and Machamp received an X Defend, but it wasn't enough, and Food dive bombed into Machamp, ending the second battle of the Elite Four. Bruno wasted both of his turns to hit. Thank goodness for bad AI. Agatha can be a scary fight if you use the wrong Pokemon and moves against her Ghost and Poison types. So I spent quite a long time figuring out which Pokemon should go first, and who I could sack, since I didn't have any super effective moves on my team. This was really a case of poor planning by me, but I chose Creamy to go first and probably get sacked. Gengar vs. Creamy started with a burn from a flamethrower and a missed hypnosis. Gengar was then burnt to a crisp from a second flamethrower. Golbat came next and I relied on Creamy's high special to hit hard with flamethrower. A lucky crit turned it into an Oko. Haunter wasted his one turn on a Dream Meter and fell to a flamethrower only exorcism. Arbok walked into a wall of flames and was O-code. Gengar hit a nightshade in between my flamethrowers and was finally laid to rest. Agatha, done. Lance is the last of the Elite Four with some very strong dragon Pokemon, and the only choice I could make was to put my not dragon, but should be dragon Gyarados, Big Worm Boy, first to handle these real dragons. Lance's Gyarados was tossed aside with a Thunderbolt. And both Dragonairs were discarded with Ice Beams. Aerodactyl rose from extinction to be put right back by a new Ice Age Ice Beam. And then came Dragonite, who must have not heard the news, and came crashing down to yet another Ice Beam. The Elite Four were beaten. We do have one last challenger, Paper. I came into this fight very confident. Big Worm Boy thunderbolted Pidgeot over the horizon. Despite missing the first Hyper Beam and my opponent using Reflect, 
The second hyperbeam melted both the spoons and Alakazam. Rhydon appeared on screen for a few seconds just to get a power washing from Hydro Pump, and Paper's Gyarados fell to my own the same way Lance's did. Arcanine must have heard from Rhydon about a quick bath because he got washed away just like his teammate. Finally, Venusaur came out, and Big Worm Boy started with an ice beam that brought it into the red. Venusaur got a critical hit with Razor Leaf, but it barely left a scratch. Big Worm Boy gave its best Kamehameha and Hyper Beamed to end the battle. We are now the Pokemon League champions. We actually have one last thing to do, but we should appreciate our Hall of Famers. Big Worm Boy, the true MVP of the game, victor over the Elite Four. Food, our first catch and destroy of grass and fighting types. Creamy, the surprise sleeper, self redeemer, and Agatha sweeper. Duck, the OG itself, and terrorizer of Brock, Blaine, Giovanni, Giovanni, and Giovanni. And Fighty Boy, the corpse. As I face the final challenge of this game, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, leave a comment telling me about your favorite part, and while you're there, leave a like, and subscribe too, it really helps. Oh, and remember, no legendaries.